In this video, I'm gonna take you guys through my exact listing process that I take clients through to win listings every single time guaranteed regardless of price point i'm going to go through the presentation slides that i give and exactly what i say at that point it all starts with just the initial meeting you set the meeting and you set the tone the second that you walk through the door you should come bearing gifts you should come with a bottle of wine some chocolate something like that along with your presentation in a bag and you just have that preset. Make sure you do a little bit of research if they might not like wine, if they might not like specific chocolate, whatever that is, if you can do research, find something that they will like. Bring that to the door, you meet them. The first thing you do when you walk into the house is ask for a tour. You don't ask to sit down, you don't ask to go talk. You say, well, great, thanks, it's so great to meet you. Here's some gifts I got for you. It would be great if I could get a tour. And that's not really a question, it's more of a, a statement. It would be great if I could get a tour. Now, they're gonna guide you through the house. Make sure to say great things about the property. Make sure to take notes. Make sure to uh, ask specific questions about anything that you find unique during that tour because they're going to understand and notice that you're paying attention to the unique things that are gonna make their house stand out. And you can then bring that up later in conversation. At the end of the house tour, I ask where a good place to sit would be, not if we could. Again, presumptively, I say where would be a great place for us to sit and have a conversation. Um, they say the kitchen, the family room, the living room, whatever they're gonna say. Move over to that area and get out your laptop. Make sure that you have beautiful marketing materials like the one behind me so that you can have that in your bag. Don't get them out yet only have the laptop out for now. And it all starts with the presentation. I like putting the initial branding and logos uh, up on the screen while I preface the conversation. As I'm hopping into the presentation, I ask if there's any questions up front that they find ultimately important. And if they have them, I'll answer them now. Otherwise, I'll get through the presentation, I'll make it fairly brief, and I will answer any other questions at the end. So I roll right in by saying, hey, beautiful house, beautiful stuff. I find everything that you did and do amazing. And really the process of selling your house all starts with the preparation. Roll right in by talking to them about the specifics that I found in their house and all of the things that I would probably change to make it worth a little bit more in a buyer's eyes. Things like decluttering, because people sometimes have a lot of extra things that make the house or the spaces feel cluttered or tight. Um, and I also would add in things like touch up paint or yard maintenance, something small probably, unless there is quite a bit of things that need to be truly repaired. I keep that fairly surface level and say, once it's all prepared, we can get into what I actually bring to the table as an agent. And then I get into property branding. One of the things that sets me apart from a lot of other agents in the marketplace is that I don't just market your house. I turn your house into a brand, into a product, and that makes it stand apart from the other houses. Instead of one, two, three, five Main Street, your house is Olympus, or like behind me, Villa Vista. Um, and it's not just a name. Oftentimes we accompany that name with logos, specific photo design direction, ad copy, it's an entire experience speaking to the end buyer avatar. Every house has a most likely purchaser. And what we wanna do is speak to that buyer as much as we possibly can on the front end. As an agent, our, our entire job is to increase the discoverability of a property. And then when you find the buyer, negotiate and help through the process. Enough, uh, not enough agents spend enough time explaining the specifics that they're going to do to increase that discoverability over and above just putting it online, which is why we've seen the rise of a lot of these online based brokerages that you just do for sale by owners because they don't see that added value how are you getting extra discoverability? So make sure that you're spending time explaining some of these things. So the next one that I talk about is the branding and I make sure to wrap up in a story. 
Um, the one that you see on the screen is what was called Legacy Point, Mirror, or Mirror Lakes Legacy Point. And that brand stuck with the property. The current owners that ended up buying the house still call it that. I don't even know what the address is today. And we ended up getting $100,000 over our asking price, which was already a fairly aggressive asking price on that property, all because that buyer had to win the property. You know, we didn't even have multiple offers. They, the buyer just had to win it. And sometimes you can create that by building a good brand. Throughout the entire video, guys, if you get anything valuable or you'd like to see more videos, if you could smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, that would make a huge difference for me. I really appreciate your support and thank you for watching. Spending some time talking about photography is kind of important. One thing that I like to hone in on is that we're not just gonna do regular photography. We're gonna do UHD photography, we'll do drone, we'll do aerial, we'll do all of the things that make your property stand out. And oftentimes I want to add in, if they would like, that we can do twilight photography as well. Again, touching base on discoverability. When, when buyers are out looking at properties online, they're clicking around on thumbnails. And the more likely we can get them to be to click into your thumbnail, the more traffic we're gonna get in your listing, meaning we'll get more showings, meaning we'll potentially get more offers or higher offers. So how can we get them to click on that lit thumbnail more likely? Well, very few properties or substantially less properties are done in twilight photography, which means it is more likely that buyers take a pause when they see that picture on the thumbnail. Make sure to show them a couple examples of the photography that I've had done in the past. If you're an agent that doesn't have any examples, make sure you team up with somebody or a mentor or a partner that can give you some examples that you can use. And that way, when you go to that situation, you can say, I can make your house look like this. That way you're not lying. You're just not saying that you did it or you know, you're not saying that I did these. Just say, I can make them look like these. I will use similar editing techniques and photographers. If you wanted to uh, at some point partner with me or work with me or get mentored by me, that's totally possible. I'm happy to let you use all of my photo and video assets uh, to help you build your business. After talking about the photography, the natural next step is talking about cinematography and videography. I often will offer this to my seller clients uh, because there's lots of opportunity. They can do a walkthrough, they can do aerial video, they can do entire commercials with actors that we've had done, and I explain that to them. I also explain to them that I'm likely going to have to charge them more for getting it done because it is a very expensive uh, aspect of marketing, and some people choose to do it, some people don't, but I do make sure to show them an example of a couple different styles of video because again, when we create that property brand and we create that avatar buyer, we want the photos, the, the feel of the photos, the ad copy, the branding name, and even the video style to match who that likely buyer is, whether it's faster tempo, whether it's lighter, whether it's poppier, whether it's more classical, whatever that feeling that we're going for is, we wanna match that across the board so that the home has a specific and identifiable brand. Now, virtual tours and 3D tours are becoming very commonplace in the industry. And what I walk the sellers through is if they'd ever seen, if they've ever seen a Matterport before, if they've seen Google Earth or anything along those lines, I'll also pull one up to give them an example uh, of the dollhouse effect that that has. And then again, touch base on the fact that when people are looking at listings on the thumbnails in many of the search engines, it will show that there's a 3D tour and it will also show if there's a video. So having those things increases the likelihood of discoverability again, and increases the likelihood that somebody clicks into the listing and the longer they're on the listing, the better. That being said, back to photography, which I know makes no sense, but I'm gonna swing back to photography right now. And I'm gonna say, by the way, your photography can't just be amazing photography once they land on your listing. It needs to be the photography in the right order. And by the right order, I do not mean a photo, a photo of the house, then a photo of the front door, then the entry, then the family room, then the, the, the kitchen. No, I mean it should be six to eight impact shots in a row. 
best shot of the house possible. Best shot of the house possible number two. Best shot of the house possible number three. And it doesn't have to be in any logical order at all. We just need to keep their eyeballs and their attention on that screen for a little bit of time. If you can keep them for six to eight clicks, they will likely stay to see the rest of the listing, increasing the chances that they actually schedule a showing. Everything that I've spoken about so far is fairly top of funnel in the discoverability channel, right? You get people to find out that the property is exists and is on the market, but then when they do schedule that tour and they're going to now tour the property, what happens next? How do you differentiate your house from the six other houses they're gonna see on that tour? One of the ways that you can do that is by doing something different with your brochures or your tactile marketing. This is when I would take my bag and I would take out a couple examples of homes that we've sold and represented that are beautifully laid out and branded and give them those examples to show, would you rather have this, if you're a buyer and you're wa walking seven houses today with your agent and five of them uh, are no flyer or a piece of paper flyer and one doesn't have a flyer and then yours looks like this, who do you think you're likely to gravitate towards when you go back to your house and you lay them all out on the kitchen table? You're going to gravitate towards ours. And again, I, I, I use language like ours and our listing a lot through the entire process because now they're just continually thinking of us as a team, us working together, and that makes a big difference as well. Make sure throughout the entire process from the beginning of when you initially meet them to the actual very end that you're taking time if they have questions in between and if they're saying specific things or have specific interests to build rapport because they're likely to going to work with somebody that they get along with. So make sure that the rapport building is strong throughout the entire process until you get to commissions. And that's a different conversation than today. We make sure to put your listing in every single website that's possible. If you can look it up, you can find your house uh, from Redfin, Zillow, Truly, a realtor, every, re every real estate agency company that offers listings on their website, you will find it there. Um, and just saying that in general is enough to explain that it will be widely advertised online and in the internet. Sometimes with really expensive properties, you wanna go through an international slide that I custom make for those uh, that explains that you can put it uh, into multiple publications in other countries that are paywall blocked or um, just out of country blocked, uh, but you can pay for them to be put in those. Uh, those are very specific cases, and uh, if you have specific questions about that type of property, let me know in the comment section or send me a message. Obviously, social media has taken a, the world by storm, and if you are selling a property, putting it on the market is one thing, and then putting it on social media is a very different thing. Um, you wanna put it on both to make sure that it's very possible for everybody in the world to see it. I'm gonna utilize Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube to advertise your property to make sure that most people in the world that I can possibly reach will see your property. Weirdly enough, a lot of agents will not mention that they're going to do anything social media related for their property, so this will already differentiate you from some of the crowd. I also think it's super important that throughout the entire process, when you choose to hire me, you're actually hiring me. So not only will you be getting me the entire process, you will also not be getting tons of other people. You won't be getting tons of other solicitors. You won't be getting lots of other agents, nobody. I undisclose your information. Now this can vary market by market, whether you're able to do this and MLS by MLS on whether you're able to do this. Um, in some cases, you might be able to undisclose their information. I like to do that. It does give the sellers peace of mind that they're not going to be pestered by agents and solicitors throughout the entire process. And I just reassure them that throughout the process, if somebody wants to show the house, I vet them and then I send the, the, the request over to the seller and then the seller will say yes or no. From that point, uh, I go back and say yes or no. Uh, and throughout the entire process, the only people they will ever speak to is me and title and escrow once we go pending. And that makes the process a lot more smooth for them. And uh, they're usually very, very interested in this point because no other agent is likely to bring it up at all. 
then we list your house. So all the back end work is done. This is when we go over with the seller again and kind of reiterate all of the stuff that we did in prep work. Just say, hey, well, we did the photos, we did the marketing, you did your prep in the very beginning, we got it all ready, and now this is when we click go and we do a grand opening and we do email marketing and we do postcards and we do blah, 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 blah. List off all the stuff you're gonna do to launch the property right when it hits the market. And this is the slide that you're, that you're gonna do it in. And uh, this is kind of just gonna hone in on, this is all that prep work that I did in the beginning. And then I hit go, and then this is what happens. We're gonna sell the house. Might take a few days, might take a few months, depends on the market that you're in, explain the market that you're in. But then you're gonna hop into a negotiation slide. A lot of people don't talk about this. They just say, I'm here to represent you. That's one thing. Sometimes just explaining what you're representing can set you apart from your competition. So saying things like, I'm going to negotiate in your best interest, but not just on price. Price is paramount, I understand that. But we also need to know whether the buyers are gonna ask for closing costs. What type of timeline are they using? What title and escrow company are they using? Because I know, for example, my title and escrow company will likely save you $1,000. So can we get them to use ours? Uh, I wanna negotiate on the terms. How long is the financial uh, addendum going to take? Is the is the inspection addendum 10 days or five days? Do they have an information verification period on the standardized boilerplate purchase and sale agreement? Or have they crossed that out or changed the timelines? We wanna negotiate on every plane that's possible to play offense and defense when we're talking to all the buyers. And obviously, we wanna take a different approach depending on our stance. If we got four offers right when we hit the, the market, we're, we will negotiate in a very different way than if we have no offers and we've been on the market for five months and we're getting very little traffic and very little showings. So um, those are uh, the ways that I walk them through the negotiation process. And then once we negotiate, we're going to put the house together and we're going to go pending and I will help you walk through that entire process. Together we work as a team. You get connected with title and escrow and you start doing their packages. You reiterate, why are you gonna hire us? Not just all the back end and the marketing and the discoverability and all of that and the negotiation and the representing you and then making sure that contractually you're covered. It's also to make sure that the entire process goes smoothly from coordinating the inspections to coordinating potential movers to coordinate. It's a lot of coordination and communication throughout the process. Even if there's nothing to report, reporting that there's nothing to report can be helpful in alleviating sellers fears and stress. And that makes all the difference in the world. So making sure that you explain that will make you a, a, a standout from the crowd when you're competing with a couple different agents. And once we've gone through the entire process, we close, everybody's happy, the buyers get their keys, you're off to the next chapter of your life, and that's when I get paid. Most people say, this is my commission, it's that period. I'm not gonna address exactly the commission structures that I offer and the things that they do. It's against the rules to do that, but what I can do is explain to you that I have different tiers based on the marketing that they want. So if they just want bare bones, put it on the market and do it good, and you get me as the representative, that's a different price than if you wanted the red carpet rolled out for you, but you have a really inexpensive house and you want commercials with actors and everything else, clearly I'm gonna have to charge you more money because of the cost of the marketing. So I don't wanna not give them that option to have that high-end marketing just because they're a lower or less expensive house. And at the same time, I don't wanna not give them the option to have the least expensive representation possible because they don't find value in the marketing and the branding aspect. I want to be the right agent for you, regardless of what your in, your your cost goals are. As long as you want to work with me as your representative, we can make the numbers work. I don't want to let the money or the numbers get in the way of us working together. And that's the way that I phrase it. And then I go through each of the packages that, that we're going to offer them. And at the end, I suggest a package. And oftentimes I'm not suggesting the expensive one. I suggest maybe the middle one or the, or the less expensive one, depending on their reaction to everything that I'm saying so far. And I say, hey, by the way, I would suggest this one. 
uh, because it gives you this, this, and this, and it doesn't give you this, which I think is gonna be more than what you need at this price point or whatever the, 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 the specifics are. And, and walking them into that, all it is is which package do you think is best for you? They say that one, great, I'll send you over the paperwork. So instead of saying, will you work with me? It's which package do you want? Because if, if you interview 30 agents, they're gonna offer you these three types, these three or two or whatever types of packages that you're going to compile. And that's the only difference. They're gonna be different prices and they're gonna offer different services. If I'm offering all of those services or an a la carte process of all of those services, it's just a question of which package are you looking for? And all of those agents are just a personification of the packages that I already offer. So if you wanna work with uh, me, then it's easy. We can make the, we can make the money work. Now, depending on what package they chose, we're done, we sign, everybody's happy. But if they don't, um, and and we're still talking, and I think, and this is maybe a more expensive property, one of the things that I bring up is private showings. That's when I'm gonna be here every single showing, even though I'm the listing agent. When the buyer's agent comes, I'm gonna be there to guide them through, to tour them through the property, to explain the specifics, the amenities, the local area, because oftentimes the buyer's agents don't know. They don't know what they don't know. Your house number's five on a seven house tour. They're too inundated and lots of details to make your house stand out. But if I'm there, I can be a pattern interrupt. They don't have any other agents showing them through their own listings of the seven. They don't have any other agents giving them materials like these. They don't have any other agents doing and giving this type of experience, which will increase the perceived value of your home. It also leaves staging to the very end because if they don't need staging, I don't wanna talk about it because then I'm just gonna say, I don't think you should do this or I don't think I should offer it to you, whatever the case is. I leave it to the very end uh, to address it if needed. Uh, or if they bring it up, I'll say, hey, I'm gonna get to that, and then I'll just make sure to bring it up in the end. Same thing with private showings. There are specific cases that I don't always go through, but I wanna make sure are in the back pocket just in case. It's always really valuable to have some sort of update your listing package option. Uh, I leave this at the very end as a just in case as well. This is if you need paint, carpet, a roof, whatever the case is, but you don't have the money for it up front, we can get that done by contractors up front and then you can have them paid out of the proceeds of escrow instead of up front. And so there's a few programs we use to accomplish that. And having a couple of those in your back pocket can help you win listings because again, nobody else is offering that style or that type of process. So that will set you apart. I know in a digital age, it's a, a big problem that everybody just wants to do things digitally. So you had a great listing appointment, you shake their hand, they're like, yeah, we wanna hire you, that sounds great. And then you say, okay, that sounds great. I'm gonna go back to the computer or back to my office and I'm going to send you uh, the AuthentiSign or the DocuSign or whatever software system you're gonna use so you can click through and sign the, the contract. Uh, and they say, okay. And then you go back and you send it and then you get crickets. That's terrible, you don't want to do that. Make sure that you actually bring a physical copy of the listing agreement. If you want an electric one, you can do it as well, but I would be a very big advocate of bringing a physical copy with you then. If they make the decision then, have them sign then so that there's no time lapse between the decision and actually the commitment. So